Hey guys, welcome back to another furniture refinishing episode. My name is Walesa from Alay Refurbish, and in this week's video, we're gonna be mixing our own glaze and working on an empire style dresser. Just drooling after I was on with today's makeover, so don't go anywhere. Stay for today's furniture transformation. Today's makeover is brought to you by Simple Green. As you guys know, I start every makeover using a powerful cleaner and degreaser. So besides cleaning furniture, I can use it to clean counters, carpets, floors, equipment, and even my car. It is recognized by the US EPA Safer Choice Program. And you know from the distance, some of these pieces don't look dirty at all, but once you remove those handles and start cleaning, there's usually a ton of grime that ends up coming out. Many of you have noticed and messaged me about how much effort I put into prepping my pieces. The reason why I spent a good amount of time prepping my piece is to make sure it's going to withstand the test of time. Whatever amount of dirt of grime doesn't get removed could come up as blotchy spots after you paint. This is also known as bleed through. When in doubt, clean. A powerful degreaser like Simple Green can leave a residue behind, so just make sure to rinse it with some water after you're done. This piece used to have a mirror and there were two posts attached to the top that held the mirror in place. That's the reason why you see a hole on each side of it. Before we address those holes, we're going to be doing a bunch of work. The goal for this piece is to sand the top to bare wood so we can stain it. That's what I'm doing with my surf prep sanding system here. And then for the rest of it, we're going to be using a base color and then a glazing effect. But since I'm going to be painting with a dark color, I'm going to use my clear shellac base primer to make sure that there is no bleed through and all those wood tannings are blocked. The one feature that makes this sander unique is these bendable abrasives. Um, they're like foamy, soft, and they're perfect for these curves because they just adapt to whatever shape. And you're ready to go. Please tell me that I'm not the only one that could watch the sander hug those curves like this for hours. You know how other refinishers find tripping finishes very satisfying to watch? Well, that's not my thing. It makes me gag, but these I could watch all day long. Before I'm going to stain any part of a piece, I like to clean it with mineral spirits first. It gives me an idea of how these wood could look after I apply the gray stain color I'll be using. The top is definitely looking red, so I'm going to be using a green dye in a bit to bring those red tones down. First, I'm gonna make some repairs, like gluing this veneer on top that's lifting up. I always let the glue dry overnight. The top of this curvy beauty has a lot of dings that need to be repaired with this plastic wood in order for me to stain it. It normally dries within half hour and then it's ready to sand. I guess I should clarify that it is not only the top that has these deep dings, they're kind of all over and there's some veneer that came off as you saw at the beginning on both sides of it so those needed to be repaired as well. ready to apply the green dye and what this is gonna do is gonna bring the red tones in this wood down so that when I apply the stain it will really take on that gray color that I'm going for. I've seen people do a paint color wash but I have this green dye I'm gonna use it. Let me tell you about a time when I tried to read the instructions on this product in a hurry. Ended up misreading them and mixed one to one ratio 
let's just say that my nightstand turned forest green. Never doing that again. It's now time to prime my piece with this clear shellac from Sensor. And since I saw all kinds of red tannings from the wood come out after I wash my piece, I'm blocking them by applying three coats of my clear primer. Allow the shellac to become tacky between each coat and let it dry for one hour prior to painting or finishing. Normally I don't use this sealer on the areas that I'm going to be staining, however this stop had some of those red tannings as well and since I'm going to be using a water-based product, I have a suspicion that those red tannings would want to come up so I'm just preventing them from doing so by applying one light coat of this sealer. Before I can start sanding this top, I'm just putting some tape around it to prevent the stain from bleeding through the bottom of the dresser. I will be using this water-based wood stain from General Finishes in the color Greystone. The top still turned out a little too red after my first coat, so I decided to apply a second one and that did the trick. Apply a liberal coat with smooth and even strokes one section at a time. Then wipe off the excess evenly with a grain using a cloth or absorbent paper towel. Remember those holes on the top? I decided to buy some screw hole buttons. They were a little too big, so I just ended up filing them to size and staining them to match the top. We will be gluing them in a bit. First, we're gonna be covering the top now to protect it from any overspray since I'm gonna be spraying my base color. We do have one final step before we can spray the paint. Did you guess what that is? Well, after we apply shellac, our piece looks shiny once again. To get rid of that sheen, we need to scuff sand. That way our paint will have better adhesion. Let's do a final wipe down to remove any sanding dust and now we can finally paint. So our base color for today is blue pine. To make our own glaze, we're gonna be mixing clear glaze with the color ash. All of these three are products from Fusion Mineral Paint. To customize your glaze color, you're gonna mix four parts of clear glaze to one part paint. Apply a liberal coat of glaze to the surface. I find that Fusion Glaze is pretty beginners friendly, being that the open work time is 15 minutes. Other brands give you two minute stops, so Again, if you're new at glazing, this is a good brand to start with. Glazing over paint is a great way to add depth to your finish or get an antique look. I ended up applying two rounds of glaze to this piece because I wanted to add even more depth to what the first coat gave me. I only applied the second coat to the areas that I wanted to highlight. In a couple of minutes here, I'm going to show you where I emphasize that second coat at.
As you wipe, you're gonna notice that your lint-free rag is going to get saturated with glaze. When that happens, fold down to your rag and use the area that's dry. Sometimes I do use whatever is left on the rag to apply glaze on other areas that don't need as much. How much you wipe really depends on your taste and how predominant you like that finish that the glaze adds. It obviously changes the look of your base color. In this case, I love the color a lot more with the glaze on than without. Let's take a close look at the difference between one coat on glaze and the second coat. Not only does her base color darken, but also there is more depthness that's added after that second coat. The way that I achieved that look on the drawers was by emphasizing my second coat to the drawer edges. Do you remember the screw hole buttons that I stained? I just added some wood glue to them and then placed them right where those holes were and they look like they have always been there. We're almost to the finish line. We just need to do one final wipe down before applying or top coat. Per usual, I'm applying three coats of high performance top coat from General Finishes with my Home Bright sprayer. I am so ready to see the final results. This is how this adorable piece used to look and this is how it looks now. I absolutely love the depthness that glazing added. It looks so grand, so elegant. Let me know what you guys think of this makeover in the comments. for being here if you enjoyed today's content don't forget to give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe turn on your notifications so that next time i post a video you'll be the first one to know don't forget that just like there's hope for these pieces of furniture it doesn't matter how tough things get there's always hope for you i will see you guys next week